only underscore wireless. Please make sure you include the underscore. This is only underscore wireless TV, of course. Please subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, hit the like button for your mans and them. And don't forget to check out the Patreon link in the bio. That's where I post the racier content that I cannot post on this platform. How did we get here? Like, I really got to ask, how in the fuck did we get here? Listen, whenever you see a nigga post some evidence that he didn't get his ass whooped, in all likelihood, he was only a hair on his chinny chin chin away from getting his ass whooped. He narrowly escaped getting his ass whooped. Now, with that out of the way, we got to give this situation some context, right? Can you imagine collaborating with somebody for 15 years and then throwing that away over a legal matter that doesn't even involve you or affect you directly? Now, what I'm addressing is the official reason that Ross gave for why he decided to unfollow Drake. And I gotta give a shout out to the YouTube channel, Diverse Lifestyle. They did a piece on the beef between Drake and Rick Ross, and I pretty much gleaned all of my information from that YouTube channel, from that YouTube video. So, the relationship between Ross and Drake, as I aforementioned, goes back 15 years to a collaboration they did on the DJ Khaled project back in 2009. The name of that song was Fed Up. They went on to make hits together such as Stay Scheming, such as I'm On One, and of course, Aston Martin Music. Drake considers Ross a mentor. These are his own words. And you gotta think, over the years, they've shown signs of having a real friendship. As a matter of fact, when their friendship was tested during the beef between Drake and Meek, Ross avoided it, famously saying that it was like two little homies fighting over a pair of J's on The Breakfast Club. And their friendship was still intact as recent as January 2024. But suddenly, Rick Ross has an appearance on the We Don't Trust You album. The Metro Boomin' Project featuring a lot of collaborators that got an issue with Drake at the time. Or that had an issue with Drake at the time. So this is followed up with a bunch of tit-for-tat shit. Drake flies out Ross's ex for the OVO experience. Ross posts a video of himself listening to one of Kendrick Lamar's discs aimed at Drake. And it goes back and forth. Drake drops push-ups. Ross drops champagne moments. BBL Drizzy becomes a hashtag. The rest is history. But what I really want to explore more so than anything, more so than just detailing what led up to the physical confrontation in Vancouver, where Ross and his team obviously took the L, I want to explore what was really the fabric, how strong was the material that made up their friendship. Because again, these guys have been collaborating together for 15 years and over a legal action or over a legal matter that doesn't even involve or directly affect you, you decide to completely dissolve the relationship. It makes me think that the relationship really wasn't that strong to begin with. Maybe this was just a working relationship, this type of relationship that was never really tested. It's like it's like smoker relationships, smoker friends. Some of your friends are only your friends because you smoke weed, my nigga. Once you decide to put the smoke down, you're not going to see those friends at all or as often as you used to see them. Or kind of like having a fucking pizza party at work with your co-workers. You're eating with your co-workers, but are these motherfuckers really your friends? And that's kind of a metaphor for the relationship between Drake and Rick Ross, in my opinion. They ate together, but were they ever really friends? I got to question that because there's a couple of theories, and they were presented in the same piece that I watched that was produced by Diverse Lifestyle. One of those theories is just accepting the fact that Ross had an issue with a cease and desist that was ordered by Drake. Now, the first lifestyle highlighted the fact that this track was allegedly produced by Metro Boomin. And we know that Metro Boomin, the guy who was responsible for pushing the BBL Drizzy narrative, even more so than Rick Ross, him and Drake don't have a relationship. They're actually beefing. So if he produced a track and Drake gave vocals to that track, it would make sense at least I can understand somewhat why he wouldn't want that to be released. But French Montana has never gone on record and said he had any issues with the cease and desist. He never said anything about the cease and desist. And he never said he had any issues with Drake, period. Apparently, they're supposed to be collaborating on a documentary and releasing music later on this year. But then there's something else to consider. Drake and Rick Ross dropped the collaboration project and they did a press run. And they did a couple of pieces. And in one of those pieces that they released to promote the project, they said that they were going to get a feature from Drake on that collaboration project. And that album came and went and there was no Drake feature. So could these things, could these things amount to enough of a reason for Rick Ross to decide, hey, I don't want to fuck with Drake anymore. 
But it's one thing to say, I don't want to fuck with you and distance myself. But to publicly show that you're aligning yourself with the ops, that's taking it to a different extreme. So it makes me really question what type of friendship that they really have, because these seem like minor things. Sometimes collaborations don't get released. Sometimes collaborations just don't happen. Sometimes features just don't get sent in in time versus don't get submitted in time. Things like this happen. But you would think that on the strength of that 15 year relationship, that friendship, that would be enough for them to be able to let go of something as small as a couple of collaboration projects not being released. But I don't know. You gotta let me know what you think. Again, you gotta wonder, how do we get here? How do we get to July 1st, where a video emerges, released by TMZ, of Rick Ross and his entourage being confronted in Vancouver and playing Kendrick Lamar's summer anthem or a 2024 anthem, not like us, and it lead into actual fisticuffs, my nigga. It led to niggas actually getting washed. It led to niggas getting put in the motherfucking spin cycle. It's a bad look, again. Anytime a grown ass man, especially an entertainer on the level of a Rick Ross, having to prove that you didn't get your ass whooped when the whole world saw you get your ass whooped, apparently some shit went wrong. So y'all let me know what y'all think in the comment section. Do you think that the cease and desist, do you think that Drake's failure to appear on the Meek Mill and Rick Ross collaboration project, do you think that those were really the reasons? Or do you think there was something deeper? Or do you think they were ever friends to begin with? Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Only underscore Wallace TV. Out.